on this beautiful day, I'm outside reading some of my book and I wanna share some of the book passages with you um, from A Boys and Men by Richard Reeves. I'm gonna read some of the passages and then I'm going to expound on them with my analysis. So I am in, I'm towards the end where Richard Reeves starts to give some of the solutions that he has offered. And so here are his, some, of his, um, some of his analysis of his solutions. So this is what he says. In recent decades, there has been an increase in female representation in STEM jobs. Women now account for almost half, 45% of the life, science, life scientists and physical scientists working in the US. For example, up from fewer than one in five in 1980. Among engineers, the proportion of women has risen from 4% to 15%. The tech industry has seen much smaller gains in recent decades with women's representation stuck at about 25%. Overall, women now account for 27% of STEM workers, up from 13% in 1980. And then he offers a graph. Now, he he seems to um, talk a lot about women, but this book is about men. So let's get into something about men. This one is titled, this um, part is titled, Why We Need More Men in Heal, H-E-A-L. Does it matter if women continue to dominate heal jobs? After all, given the natural sex selection between men and women, we should not be surprised if more women than men are attracted to these occupations. The question, however, is how many more? As I have been, as I have been at some pains to point out, the distribution of male and female natural preferences and interests greatly overlap. Just as the current underrepresentation of women in engineering or in leadership roles cannot be plausibly attributed to natural causes, it is equally absurd to think that 18% of male um, share of social workers is an authentic representation of the true level of interest in the job among men, especially since it has halved since 1980. If certain occupations are seen as no-go zones for men, their choices are constrained just as much as for women in the reverse case. Heel sectors are where the jobs are coming from. To improve male employment prospects, we need to get more of them into these kinds of jobs. Harvard's David Deming calculates that between 1980 and 2012, jobs requiring high level of social interaction grew by nearly 12 percentage points as a share of the US labor force. Meanwhile, math intensive but less social jobs shrank by 3.3 percentage points over the same period. It is true that STEM professions are more often described as the job of the future. The glossy photos of bright young people in lab coats certainly add to that sense. But in terms of raw job creation, Heal is outpacing STEM by my calculations for every STEM job created by 2030, there will be three new heel jobs. It is true that on average, STEM jobs pay better than heel ones. This reflects the fact that some of the largest heel occupations have low wage rates. There are around 610 home health and profession, I mean, personal care aides, for example, working and earning about $26,000. But there are also plenty of heel jobs with relatively high pay levels, such as nurse practitioners at $100,000, medical and health services managers at $71,000, education and child care administration administrators at $70,000, or occupational therapists at $72,000. Many heel jobs also offer a high degree of job security, even in an economic downturn. We still need nurses and teachers in a recession. The second reason to get more men into heel jobs is to help meet the growing demand for labor labor in occupations like nursing and teaching. Almost half of all registered nurses are now over the age of 50. This means many are more likely to retire in the next 15 years, especially if they are under greater stress at work. Meanwhile, the number of nurses and nurse practitioners needed is expected to increase by 400,000 by 2030. Even before COVID-19, nurse burnout was seen as a growing problem. Hospitals were having dif difficulty finding nurses to fill positions before the pandemic. So there is a need for nurses. Um, I do want to talk about um, one of the, the graphs that he has right here, talking about men's um, occupations and how they have shrank 
since 1980. Um, he talks about this and what he is not doing is talking about the implication of how pay has impacted men choosing these um, situations. Um, he did, um, I'm going to skip to page 162 in this book. He finally, after so many pages of talking about what is missing, he, he gets to the, the a small portion about pay. He says, there is a strong case for increasing pay levels in some of these critical occupations, including social work, counseling, and teaching. Higher wages are likely to attract more men into these roles, but would also help the women working in them today. The pay of K through 12 teachers in, um, is the same as it was at the beginning of the century. Following a series of teacher strikes, President Joe Biden told teachers in 2021, you deserve a pay raise, not just a, not just praise. He wants to spend an extra two, um, $20 billion annually through the Title I program, which provides services and um, resources to schools serving poor students. For $15 billion, we could give a $10,000 pay raise to every teacher in a high poverty school. That just seems like a no-brainer to me. I'm still reading Richard Reeves of, of Boys and Men, and I want to analyze some of these passages in this book. Richard Reeves is using quite a few um, numbers that entail women and talking about women and how women have um, increased our visibility in STEM. And he's using this to juxtapose what men need to get into the heel professions. And the heel professions, as, um, as stated by him, are healthcare, education, administration, and literacy. From his um, numbers, he says that there, for every job created in STEM, there will be three in HEAL that are created. And his, um, his analysis is that men and boys need more men in these HEAL jobs. And he's using STEM. And he was talking about the fact that women have pushed and um, pushed to get more women and girls into STEM and that we need to model this in order to get more men in HEAL. And I believe that this is a foolish um, way to think about it because women had to go in, wanted to go into STEM because um, in the typical female professions, we were underpaid, undervalued, and these professions were devalued in our society. So what we did to push into STEM and the reasons why we pushed into STEM are not going to reflect the same way for men going into heel. Men are not going to go into heel until those are paid professions that mirror kind of going into STEM. On this page, he is talking about the fact that um, he's talking about pay. And this is not a small factor in how um, men or people in general choose their choose their jobs and their professions. You are not going to entice a man to go into a female dominated profession by just, you know, offering programs, doing more trainings, offering scholarships is not going to happen because these have already been stereotyped as female professions and we're paid like um, female professions. So the way he is um, analyzing this is coming from a straight numbers game, but that's not how it works. When we have been stigmatized into these roles as women, we are not going to just turn it around just by saying, let's offer some more programs to see if we can get men into these programs. Here is one of the graphs that he used to show how males have decreased um, in these professions since 1980. And this is something that needs to be addressed, but none of this will be addressed until the historical underpayment of women in these professions um, is addressed. And I do not believe that our country is ready to address that. But you guys can go ahead, read some of this, and tell me what you think.